If you would have told a Kentucky fan 10 years ago that the Wildcats program would be in this spot, they'd probably call you crazy. Head coach Mark Stoops has turned around this Kentucky program as they have an incredible home atmosphere, they're producing NFL draft picks, they're winning bowl games, and more importantly, they're competitive every year now. This Wildcats team is extremely exciting, and the best season of the last few years could be in 2022. A lot of people think that Kentucky is a sleeper in the SEC East and that they could potentially dethrone Georgia and win the division. Others think they're overrated, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the truth about Kentucky football as we're going to preview their roster, go through their schedule, and talk about what expectations should be and what you should expect. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started and preview Kentucky football for 2022. Last year, expectations were not that high for Kentucky. I mean, people thought they would make a bowl game, but no one thought they'd have the kind of year they had. Well, two transfers changed the game. One was Wandell Robinson, a wide receiver from Nebraska, and the other was Will Levis, a backup quarterback from Penn State. Both of those guys started and had incredible years. The Wildcats offense got off to a hot start as they beat Louisiana Monroe in week one, and then despite having a ton of turnovers, survived against Missouri at home in week two. From there, they had a scare in week three against Chattanooga, in which they only won by five points, and then they went and won by six points at South Carolina. The Wildcats had started out at 4-0, but they really weren't seen as legitimate because they kept skating by in every game. That changed when they finally beat number 10 Florida. Emory Jones would throw a late interception, and Kroger Field absolutely erupted as they beat the number 10 Gators 20-13 and were now ranked number 16 in the nation. Things reached hysteria as when LSU came the following week, they won that game 42-21 and the Wildcats started out 6-0. College game day decided to go to Athens for their matchup with the number 1 Bulldogs, but Georgia put them in their place as they beat the Cats 30-13. After that, they'd have an unexcusable slip up as they go on the road to Mississippi State and lost 31 to 17. And that's not taking anything away from the Bulldogs, but from the way Kentucky football had been playing, they should have won that game. The losing streak would go all the way to three as they then lost at home to Tennessee, 45 to 42. And after a six and no start, they were now six and three. Thankfully though, the Cats got back on track as they went and beat Vanderbilt, killed New Mexico State at home, and then killed their rival Louisville on the road in the Governor's Cup. They finished the regular season with a 9-3 record, and they get selected to play in the Citrus Bowl. In a thrilling game against number 15 Iowa, the Wildcats came back and beat the Hawkeyes 20-17, giving them another bowl win, and they would finish inside the top 25. The Cats would go 10-3 with a 5-3 mark in the SEC, and first-year offensive coordinator Liam Cohn was so good, he took an NFL job. As we head into 2022, though, expectations are really high for the Cats, so how good will they be? Let's talk about the returning roster first. When we take a look at what they lost, they had four guys get drafted in the 2022 NFL Draft. In the second round, their star receiver Wandell Robinson was taken by the Giants, and then three picks later, their star defensive end Josh Pascal would get drafted. After that, they lost two great linemen in center Luke Fortner and offensive tackle Darian Kinnard. The Wildcats did lose some talent, but they're also going to bring some in. According to 24-7 Sports, the Cats brought in the number 18 recruiting class in the country, which is headlined by former five-star offensive tackle Keontae Goodwin, wide receiver Dane Key, and wide receiver Barryon Brown. They did a good job there, as they immediately brought in some blue-chip talent at positions they lost to the NFL. When you take a look at their transfer portal haul, it's good, but it's not anything spectacular. They did bring in Ole Miss corner Keydron Smith, former Alabama wide receiver Javon Baker, former Iowa quarterback Deuce Hogan, Ohio State defensive lineman Darian Henry Young, Auburn defensive lineman Tayshawn Manning, and a big time transfer from Virginia Tech in wide receiver Tavion Robinson. Could it be a Robinson 2.0? We'll just have to wait and see. So as we take a look at the quarterback spot, there was a lot of hype for the guy who's going to be running the system, Will Levis. This guy was only a three-star recruit coming out of high school, and apparently he wasn't even good enough to beat out Sean Clifford. So the fact that people are saying this guy could be the number one overall pick is honestly insane, but he did work for it, and he had a good 2021 season. When you take a look at that quarterback spot, they'll obviously bring back Will Levis, and then behind him, you'll have a former big-time recruit in Bo Allen, and then Iowa transfer Deuce Hogan, who is apparently a walk-on. When it comes to the running back spot, they return one of the best backs in the nation in Chris Rodriguez. He ran for over a thousand yards last year and would have definitely been taken in the 2022 NFL Draft, but he decided to come back. This spring, he ended up getting in trouble, and at the time of me recording this video, there's not a lot of clarity on the situation, but I'm going to guess he's probably going to be good to play in 2022, 
but if he's not, let me know down below. Behind him, you'll have Cavosier Smoke and Juton McLean. You also cannot forget Torrance Davis, who moved from linebacker, Travis Tisdale, and Lavelle Wright. There's definitely some good players at that running back spot, but Rodriguez is going to be the guy. Wide receiver is where things get pretty interesting. The Wildcats had a lot of talent at that position, but they also lost a lot. They obviously lost Wandale Robinson to the NFL, they lost super senior Josh Ali, and Isaiah Epps transferred to Tulsa. Luckily, they did get some help from the transfer portal as they brought in two guys who could play right away. One of them is Tavion Robinson, who while at Virginia Tech, caught over 113 passes for 1,500 yards and 13 touchdowns. He's one of those guys who should step in and be a wide receiver one right away, and I'm really high on this kid. After that, you'll have Javon Baker from Alabama, who is obviously a blue chip recruit, and if he can put his talent together, could be a great weapon for Levis, and could break out and play right away. Other guys who are on the roster who are going to play a lot include Demarcus Harris, Cleveland Thomas, and Rashawn Lewis. Guys who are more wild cards include last year's freshman Chauncey Magwood, who played in all 13 games, Tay Tay Crooms, and Ernest Sanders, and then finally, you cannot forget the freshman they brought in, as they got some talented guys. The first one is Dane Key, who is from Lexington, Kentucky, and he has the talent to play right away. And then their top 100 receiver, Barry on Brown from Nashville. And you also cannot rule out Brandon White from Cincinnati. There are plenty of options here and plenty of talented guys, but we're just going to need a couple dudes to step up if Kentucky football wants to take it to the next level. I'm not too worried about the defense because Stoops always has that in a good spot and he recruits well at the offensive line position. So honestly, it's going to come down to the offense this year. How are they going to do with the schedule? So as we take a look at the Wildcats schedule, they will play Miami of Ohio in week one. This game will be a simple win and they'll get to 1-0. Week two is where things immediately get difficult. They always play the Gators in this week two matchup, and while it is Billy Napier's first year, after what happened last year and the track record Florida has in this series, it's really hard for me to pick against the Gators in this one. So because Florida is at home, I'm going to say they upset Kentucky in week two, and this puts the Wildcats at a one and one record. From there, they're going to take care of Youngstown State and Northern Illinois at home before they have a huge road game against Ole Miss. The Wildcats play two extremely difficult road games after Florida, and I think they're going to go one and one in that stretch, and I pick them to win one later on in the schedule. So for right now, I have them losing to the Rebels. This game will be difficult on the road. It's against Lane Kiffin, and I'm pretty high on the Rebels this year, so I think Kentucky loses their second game and start out three and two. Luckily from there though, there's a lot of wins in the horizon. I think they're going to take care of South Carolina at home, as I believe the Gamecocks are a tad bit overrated. They're going to play Mississippi State at home, which will be a tricky game for them, but I think the defense will be able to stop the air raid, and Kentucky will win that game. And then they go on the road to Tennessee. This could be that game that decides second place in the SEC East, and many people are talking about how it could be one of the biggest games in the rivalry in years. I 100% agree, and after what happened last year, I think the Wildcats are going to go into Neyland Stadium and pull off an upset in this one. Sometimes you have to be bold, and I think that's going to happen. Tennessee fans won't be happy with that, and while I could easily see the Volunteers winning that game, I'm going to make a bold prediction and say that Kentucky wins that game, and then they're going to go ahead and beat Missouri the next week. I'm a Mizzou fan, and I'm not very high on the Tigers, so I'm going to say Kentucky wins that game, and that gets them to seven wins. After that, Vanderbilt comes home, and that should be a win, and then they get a huge home game against Georgia. I think there's a chance that college game day comes for this game, and if somehow the Wildcats only have one loss at this point in the season, this could be one of the games of the year in college football, and I could see a world in which Kentucky finally pulls the upset off, but for right now, it is so hard to pick against Georgia, and the last few times Kentucky's been hyped up against the Dogs, they've lost, so I have no other reason but to believe that Kentucky's going to lose this game, and I'm going to put that down as a loss for now, but watch out for an upset. After that, they get Louisville at home in the Governor's Cup, and Stoops has pretty much dominated that rivalry, so I see no reason why that doesn't continue, as I don't think Louisville's very good, Kentucky's at home, and they're just the better team, so that gives the Wildcats a 9-3 record, just like last year, where they'll likely make a good bowl, and depending on the matchup, I'm probably going to pick them, because the Kentucky Wildcats always win their bowl games. Overall though, the hype is probably a little bit too much for them as their schedule is pretty difficult and while some think they could win the East, I think winning 9 or 10 games is reasonable for them and would be enough for Will Levis to keep his name in the top 10. Kentucky has all the potential in the world to be good, but they gotta find that go-to wide receiver or else the offense will be one dimensional with the run game and things are not going to go according to plan. Either way though, this is super impressive for Kentucky. The hype is definitely warranted, and the opportunity is there for them to have another great year. But what do you guys think? 
If you're a Kentucky football fan, please let me know what I got wrong down in the comment section below as give me your thoughts on the roster, your prediction for this year, and your expectations for this season. If you're a fan of another school, let me know what you think of Kentucky in my prediction and give me what team I should take a look at in my next video. Also, before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including all my other 2022 previews. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace. Thank you.